We are going to be talking about three different types of power sources because a lot of you, as you're thinking about your, uh, your new life and living in the van, you have a lot of choices. Most of you have more choices than you think you do. So I just want to lay them all out with their strengths and their weaknesses, and that way you can make a more informed decision. Generator, creating uh, just a, carrying just a, gen, uh, a generator, producing your own electricity with it. Solar power, which is, uh, I've got a solar panel here and a solar controller going into a battery. So that's a, you know, you can mount this on your roof or you can have it outs going in and out. So that's, you can do this two ways, but this is a, a mounted system inside your rig or solar panels going outside. And then uh, finally, the third one is a, a power station with an external solar panel you sit outside. So they each have their own really strong uh, points and their only really weak points. So the key thing is that you decide what's most important to you. So for a lot of you, you can't install it, you can't afford to pay someone to install it. So that would eliminate a mounted system in your roof. You're not gonna go up, you're not gonna cut a hole in your roof, you don't wanna cut a hole in your roof. Uh, and so this would work really well for you because it's plug and play, no installation. Or this would work because it's plug and play, no installation. Well, I'm actually gonna show you a fourth system which requires virtually no money. And so maybe that will be the one you work with, uh, you ultimately decide to buy. So you get, stay, stay to the end of the video and I'll show you the fourth system, which is very, very cheap. So the, your first thing you're gonna wanna know is how much do they cost to get into? So I'll try to give you a wide range. I'll show you what I've got here, but I'll give you an idea of the different prices. So if you're gonna buy a generator, uh, this one was $500. Uh, this is a 2,000 watt dual fuel, meaning it'll run on propane on gas. I would recommend this to you, buy dual fuel. You have to have a battery charger. Again, this is just a battery charger. It's all plug and play. And then you have to have a battery. For both of these systems, you have to buy your own battery. With, of course, with the power station, it comes with its in battery internal. This happened to be a battery I have on hand. Uh, the cheapest you can get a battery for on Amazon is about $200. So figure uh, 500 for the generator, uh, 200 for the battery, and 200, and again, the, the size, the quality, huge range, but I'm gonna say 200. So you've got five, six, seven, eight, nine. You've got about $900 here and it does not come with an inverter. Of course, this is an inverter generator, so you can plug all your 110 appliances directly in. So I'm gonna suggest that you buy a, if you wanna run larger appliances, uh, then uh, like a microwave, then you're gonna to wanna to buy an inverter. And I'm gonna give you $200 to buy a 2000 watt inverter. So that's this system. It's gonna end up costing you about a thousand bucks, 100, 200, and, and, and a lot of variables. You can spend a lot more, yeah, you can't spend a whole lot less, but you can spend less. Next, we have a you build it yourself and mount it on the roof solar power system. What will you need? You'll need a solar panel. This was the only solar panel I happen to have lying around, so this is a folding external one. But you can mount, you can uh, when you build your own solar system, you can buy these uh, uh, portable panels and lay it outside. A lot of people do that. That really diminishes the difficulty of installation if you're not cut, going up on the roof and mounting it and cutting holes and running drilling wires so you can run wires. That really makes it a whole lot easier. But there are a lot of disadvantages to that, and we're going to talk about many of the disadvantages. There are a lot of huge advantages to just mounting on your roof, never thinking about it again. You'll need a, a solar controller. You need a solar panel, a solar controller, and then you need a battery. So the battery will be a couple hundred bucks. The controller will be a couple hundred bucks, 100 to 200, depending on the quality you buy, uh, and you're gonna need a solar panel. So I figured on all of that, <clears throat> you can buy a 200 watt hard panel kit for $300. That will include your controller, the two panels, the controller, and uh, mounting brackets. So for about 300 bucks, you can get your solar and your controller, and then your battery will be 200, and now you don't have an inverter, so uh, you can buy, and I'm giving you 300 to buy a good quality 2000 watt pure sign inverter. So altogether, uh, this is going to cost you $800. Uh, that's your initial cost. You'll have some cabling, some fuses. It's gonna run up a little bit more, um, but that's usually true of nearly all of them. 
So uh, that one's going to be about 1,000. This one's going to be about 800. And then finally, let's talk about the power stations. That's what a lot of you are going to want. By far the easiest of them all, you, uh, you get by a solar panel. This is the only one I had, but this was a 200 water. Uh, so you buy a solar panel, you buy the power station of the size you want and can afford. You can buy a very small one. Uh, most of the small ones are not going to run a fridge. That's what most of you are concerned about. I'm going to build you systems here that can run fridges. So that's the prices I'm giving you. Uh, if you don't want to run fridge, then you can save a lot of, mon a lot of money by buying a smaller system. This is a truly all-in-one kit, plug and play, and that's why so many of you are buying them. You can get a 200 watt solar panel, either two 100s or, or one 200 for about $200. This will run you, uh, depends on what size you want, at the cheap end, 300. Uh, a little better one is gonna be up to 700. So you are in a price range and size range that you have to decide for yourself. Do you wanna buy a better brand name? And those are all decisions you have to make. If you just want the cheapest possible thing, then this can be pretty, pretty cheap. I have a table I'm gonna put up on the screen and we're gonna go through it. Uh, so we're gonna talk about the initial cost. I have the initial costs wildly placed at 1,000 for the generator, 800 for the, uh, the initial, the amount your own panels and about the same for a panel you, you carry out, but it's everything is mounted inside, you have to buy the battery. And then I'm figuring about 900 for this to be able to run a fridge. Again, that's the standard I'm setting here. I'm talking about systems that can run a fridge. You can't buy one of the little tiny ones and plan to run a fridge. So uh, you need at least 200 watts of solar to run a fridge. You need at least 1200 watt hours of battery. So the cost per watt of this is 66 cents. You've bought 1,500 watts. It costs you $1,000 at 66 cents a watt. The cost of this is $4. Cost, uh, what is that? Nearly eight times as much per watt that you're getting. So if you look at it that way, these are terrible deals. This is a fantastic deal. Uh, and this is $4.50 a watt because it's just a little bit more expensive. Now, the first uh, category we're consider is cost to operate ongoing expenses. And I'm gonna give each one a scale of one to zero to 10. And 10 is the best, off the charts. So at the end of this list, we want, if you got all 10s, well, you're perfect, but they won't get all 10s. So the cost to operate on this is zero, meaning the lowest, the worst, because man, you're gonna keep buying gas or propane, you're gonna keep buying oil and changing oil, it's going to need more, many more repairs than the others. So the ongoing costs of this are very high, so it gets zero. The ongoing costs of this are non-existent. Uh, if you put the panels on the roof, it's you install it once and you never think about it again. With a little luck, you can never think about it again for five, 10, 30 years if you buy quality components. So extremely high, this gets a 10. Um, the one reason I would give, if you put your panels outside, you're probably going to buy them more, you're going to carry them around more. These break easier. These, these soft, uh, uh, these break, they won't last as long. So you're going to have to replace them sooner. I'm giving it a seven, I'm knocking off three points. Same thing with this, uh, the ongoing costs to operate, which are zero, of course, but this panel will fail much sooner. So I'm only gonna give this system a seven as well. Okay, storms. The big reason I just bought this generator was because uh, we had some a long series of storms. And of course, these don't produce any power because they're solar panels. Uh, but this creates power at all time. This gets a 10 for weather impact the storms. These two, because they're dependent on solar, because uh, the external system uh, isn't going to, uh, is going, you can't have it out in a storm. These things will have controllers and the panels aren't waterproof and it has to come in. So it a storm not only creates the hassle of uh, you have to bring it in, but it's not producing any power. And so these get zeros for how they handle storms, that gets a 10. The mounted system, mounted on the roof, you don't have to do anything so there's no inconvenience but you're not getting any power either. And so it still gets a zero. Uh, I think the next most important factor is can you park in the shade? Because it's gonna get hot in the summer. Wherever you go in this country, it gets hot in the summer. 
With the generator, you can park in the shade no problem. It gets a 10. With a mounted system on the roof, you get, I'm giving you zero because the, the whole van, for that to work, the whole van has to be outside in the sun and there's zero shade there and it's gonna be really, really hot. With the uh, mounted, partly mounted, the hybrid, the partly mounted system and solar panels, then yes, you can get a long enough cable, you can park in the shade. So the uh, hybrid system where most of the part of the system is mounted inside and the pan solar panels go outside, I gave that a 10 because you can park in the shade and run a long cord out to the portable solar panel. This one, of course, gets a 10 because you can just carry the whole thing out. You can find the sun, you can carry the whole thing out, park it in there while your van's in the shade. It also gets a 10. One more thing to consider when uh, talking about shade and being hot, because that's very important when you think about solar. This can run an AC. So even if you have to, and you're somewhere there is no shade, and that happens, you can run an air conditioner. You can run it with that and not with the others. That's a pretty big deal. Okay, next, for a lot of you, this is one of the most important factors. Is it plug and play, the ease of installation? And again, this is plug and play. You just plug it all together. I gave this a 10 because it's always pretty easy to use. It's all plug and play. And a, a good, you know, if you buy a Honda, for example, it should start first pull, every pull, every time, forever. On a mounted system inside, I'm going to give that a 10 because uh, from there on in, you don't do anything. You just, you don't even do anything but watch the power roll in. It's, it's the, the true king of um, a mounted system on your roof. Uh, you've got, you do nothing. You don't think about it again. It just always works. And again, this is for ease of installation. This is a plug and play. It gets 10. You just plug it all together, run your panel outside, and away you go. Plug and play, 10. Okay, now I have something I'm calling the ease of use. Once you've bought it, uh, and I'm thinking kind of a babysitting. Do you have to babysit the system? Does it take thought? Does it take effort? With the generator, I gave it a 10. Other than rain, and you can buy tents for these things that you put in it, or you can put out a tarp system where it's sitting inside rain. It's it's plug and it's done. You don't have to think about it again. A mounted system gets a 10. Uh, the ease of use, uh, the amount of babysitting requires is zero. So you get a 10, the highest, uh, the highest value. With the external hybrid system, I'm giving that a five because you've got a solar panel outside, a sudden wind comes up, you don't want it blowing away, your neighbor's dog's over here peeing on it, you gotta keep your eye on it, you don't want them out there peeing on it or walking on it or chewing on it. You gotta be aware that rain is coming. Anytime you have an external solar panel, you've got, a, 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 you're gonna babysit it. So for ease of use, I gave this zero uh, baby, uh, babysitting because it has to be babysat constantly. Any one of those problems, you gotta get it, brought, you gotta go grab it, bring it back in. For the hybrid system, it's just the solar panel. I gave it five. I gave it five points because all you're worried about is the solar panel. Our next factor is maintenance. Uh, I gave this a zero because it requires constant maintenance. Again, this is a mounted system and the um, it's 10 because you plug it, play, forget it. Uh, these break sooner, so your reliability is not as good as a, a hard mounted panel. So I'm giving this a five, the hybrid system, because these panels just don't, don't last. On the uh, battery maintenance, I'm giving it a zero as well, because of course you've got out external panels and that hurts it. But the big thing is with any of these other systems, if one component fails, you take it out, you put a new one in, that's it. This, uh, one component fails, you're mailing the whole thing back for service. So I'm giving it a zero for long-term maintenance because of that fuss factor and the risk of being without power. We're gonna look, next we're gonna look at, will it run power hungry items? So like we said, uh, for example, AC, can you run an air conditioner? None of the solar based systems can run air conditioner. Yes, technically it is possible. If you have the money to throw at the solar panels, if you have the room, to carry all the solar panels, to mount them on your roof. If you have the money to buy all the batteries you're gonna require, then technically, yes, solar can run air conditioning. But for, for mo nearly all of us uh, who are on a tight budget, no, no chance. You're not running an air conditioner. These all get zero, because you can't run those big items, and this gets 10. So that's one of the big things about it. You can run, well, you can run anything, essentially. 
Holes in the roof. I know a lot of you are afraid to, to put holes in your roof, so I'm gonna count that as a factor. No hole in the roof, 10. Hole in the roof, zero. No hole in the roof, 10. No hole on the roof, 10. One last factor I wanna consider is when you're driving, how much power do you get while you're driving or are you just gonna do without? Well, with the generator, you're doing do without because you're not getting any, so I'm giving the generator zero for driving. Mounted on the roof uh, gets a 10. You're driving, you're getting power 100% of the time. Uh, external system mounted internally, but uh, with external batteries, then no, that gets a, z a zero because it has to be outside. Now the power station is a little bit different because it comes equipped from the box to be able to plug it in and get some power. It's limited. So I'm giving a, a power station five for while you're driving. For those of you who have next to no money and very little power draws, you don't care about running a fridge. You just want some lights, your phone, uh, a fan. I've got another solution that's by far cheaper than anything else. And that is just a little USB system. So you buy a battery bank. This is a small one. This is pretty cheap. I don't remember how much of that was, but it was pretty cheap. And you buy these little uh, folding solar panels. This takes up no room in your rig. If you're in a car, you're going to love this. This is a winner on almost every front. You just can't operate much. Nearly all of them now come with multiple USB ports. This is a really good USB lantern that I like a lot. It's running on, uh, this charging, it's charging it right this second. You can buy these that are 60 watts for about 60, 70, uh, maybe up to $100. But then you've got 60 watt, and that's pretty serious power. They'll come with multiple USBs. And for a lot of you, that's all you're going to need. This could really be a perfect solution for you. You know, my goal here in all that I do on this channel and on my website is to make sure you have the highest quality of life you can. That uh, you follow your dreams, your dreams come true that you don't just survive and barely make it in life. You live a great life of your choosing. That's what I want for you. So I have a couple of videos here that I think will help you do that. Check those out. 